Hello, my name is Steve, and today I thought I would do something a little different. I, uh, well, I'd say about an hour ago now, or a little over the so, maybe two hours ago, maybe an hour and a half, I was thinking, I want to do an album review. But what album do I want to review? And then came up with the idea to go onto Amazon Music, and the first album I found that I had never heard of the artist or heard any of the songs, I would listen to it at least once, and review it. So, I f was kind of afraid that I would it would be some pop album, because, you know, I'm not exactly known to be a very big fan of pop music. But, you know, I, I keep an open mind. I, like, my one, my number one thing I hate with music is people who don't have an open mind. I will listen to anything you put in front of me with an open mind. So, the first thing I did was I went to the Recommendations tab, and uh, went to the Albums Just For You, or Selected For You, or whatever it's called. And of course, I, I have at least heard of most of the artists on there, I, except for one. One album, and you can probably guess which one it is, because it's in the title of this video, the album that I'm reviewing. My fingernails are really dirty. Well, it's just the index finger, obviously. I wonder why. Uh... It's 15 Years in a 10-Year Town by Ward Davis. Now, the second I heard him start singing in the first song, No Going Home, I was like, how have I never heard this man before? This man is exactly my taste in music. I said I would listen to the album at least once. I listened to it like two and a half times. So it was probably longer than two hours ago. I don't know. This isn't a very long album. I'm not good with time in my head. It was a while ago that I had this ad idea initially. But I listened to it like two and a half times. And it is, spoiler alert, very good, at least to me. But uh, before I do that, uh, I got some Taylor's Pride. I would throw in a rub, but I'm running very low on rub, so. Chew it is, if I don't spill half, half the hand on the floor. Half the hand, half the pinch. So I don't have a pinch of it. You know what I'm saying. Some on the paper. But yeah, like, I don't know how this man has managed to fly under my radar until today. And this album's not, like, newer either. It's from 2015. So I have no clue how I've never, never heard of him before. Uh, there's nine songs, I'll go through them real quick. No Going Home, More Goodbye, 15 Years in a 10 Year Town, Nobody's Looking, Old War Out Cowboys featuring Jamie Johnson and Willie Nelson, The Overpass, Unfair Weather Friend, I Got You, and Skeptic's Prayer. Skeptic's Prayer. Like I said, I have no clue how I've never managed to hear any of this man's music before. Especially because his Old War Cowboys features Jamie Johnson, who I'm a huge fan of. If you've never heard of Jamie Johnson, go listen to the song High Cost of Living. I love that song to death. Uh, and of course, Willie Nelson. I mean, I like Willie Nelson. Who doesn't like Willie Nelson? If you don't like Willie Nelson, I don't think you're a human being. But this is country music. Like, like this album is the embodiment of country music to me. Like, I have a friend, and he, he doesn't really get the point of country music. And I'm, I don't really understand how to say it over text, so I'll say it here, because I know he watches my videos. Country music, it's not... It's about your feelings, and it's about expressing your feelings, or expressing feelings in general. And 
and a lot of the time, for a lot of artists, that's, those feelings are sadness and addiction and all this other stuff, which makes such good music. Like this. <laughs> and, you know, personally, country music as, is the best when it's as depressing as possible. Like, yeah, like, the new country music, what is it, modern country, bro country, whatever the hell you want to call it, it's straight away from that. It's not depressing anymore. Like, where is my depressing country music? That's what I want. But then again, pop music in general isn't really sad. Even though it should be. Because sad music makes you think, you know? When you listen to something depressing, or something that's not just upbeat and happy, like, oh, I'm happy, I like dancing, like, you know, it makes you think. And that's a good thing. Unless you live in Fahrenheit 451. In that case, thinking's bad. Or media that promotes thinking is bad. Because it's all for entertainment. It's all for enjoyment. If you don't enjoy something and you aren't entirely entertained by it, then it's not worth anything. If you, I, if you never read Fahrenheit 51, go read it. It's a good book. Not as good as 1984, but that's getting off topic. Yeah, like I said... I'm, I'm so, I, I'm going to say this again, I'm so surprised I've never heard of him before. Like, I don't know if it's just me, and I somehow have never heard of him, but, yeah, like, and it's not like I don't even, like, look, look for new artists. Like, I look for new artists a good bit. Like, I like finding new artists, like, so I don't understand how I've never heard of him before. And... The best song on this album, by far, is The Overpass. Like, it is such a classic, depressing country song. Like, it, it feels like you've heard it a million times before. At least if you like, like, old country, like, or depressing country music. You know, it feels, you feel at home listening to it. It's so good. The only way it could be more depressing country is if the guy killed himself at the end. Which he doesn't. Like, that's the only way it could get, like, even more depressing country. Like, Yuma by, uh, Justin Towns Earl. Definitely goes in that song as well. That song's also very good. Spoiler alert, he kills himself at the end, though. <laughs> and, uh... Talk about song number five, a song featuring Jamie Johnson and Willie. It's also a very good song. These are all good songs. Uh, I just realized I forgot to give it a scale of deliciousness. I'll come with one of them. I forgot to write one down though. And uh, I wrote another note I wrote. It's definitely a great newer country album. Of course, it's not that much newer because it came out in 2015, but in 2015. It's still pretty new in my mind, especially for country music, when most of the country music I like is old. Like, old, old. Uh, but yeah, this is good. And I, I read another note. It says, great starting point for a new country listener looking to get into country music. If you have ever wanted to get into country music, or even if you haven't, I, I don't know. But uh, if maybe you've heard, maybe you have a bad impression of country music. Because all of you who have ever heard of country music is like Luke Bryan and Fleur Georgia Line and all that who aren't real country music. Sorry, I'm spitting a lot. But, uh, if, 
like, if you have a bad impression from it from them, let's say listen to this album. It's really good. Probably wouldn't be my number one pick for a new country listener to listen to, but honestly, I, I know way too many country albums that it's hard to just narrow it down to, like, what would be the best for a beginner to listen to. That sounds really weird, beginner. Country music beginner. <laughs> I'd say if you're a fan of, like, extremely happy music, this probably isn't for you. But if you like to, you know, think a little bit, you like your songs to be more sad, this is for you. So good. Scale Deliciousness, hell, I'll give it a 99.99%. This album is as good as all the germs that Lysol kills. Because... It's really good, but uh, that .01% is lightning from the north. And I, it was, I reviewed, uh, what is it? What the hell is the name of that? Three, three, it's a 357, what the hell? My favorite bluegrass album, favorite album really of all time. I can't even remember the name of it. What is it? Fire and Hell. Fire and Hell. Yeah, obviously Fire and Hell and lightning from the north are that .01%. basically nothing in my mind can beat those. It would take a lot to beat those. So yeah, 99.9%. .99, whatever. .9, .99, same thing. Well, not really, but kind of, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, yeah. Definitely go give this a listen. Like, without a doubt, go give this a listen. It's not that long, I said. It's only nine songs long. Not a bad song on it. Choosing Chew for this video is a bad idea, because I'm spitting through the whole thing. Obviously, I'm sp I'd be spitting with rub, but, like, like continuously spitting. Of course, that's because I have a habit of chewing the chew way too much. But, uh, yeah. I'm gonna end this here. Or else it's just gonna be another, like, ten minutes of me just spitting. Which I can't imagine is really what anyone wants to watch. Unless you've got some weird, like, brown spit fetish. And if you do, hit me up. That's a joke, by the way. If you have a brown spit fetish, don't hit me up, because that's really weird. I'll see you guys next time.